There are dozens of species of fish throughout North America that are referred to as suckers, with around 10 separate genera or genus. The two most common and widespread being Catastomus, which includes the majority of the common species of fish with the name sucker, like the white sucker or the long nose sucker, and then there's Moxostoma, which contains all of the species of red horse and jump rocks. All of these fish are in the family Catastomidae. It can take some careful study and observation to recognize the differences between these two branches of sucker, along with all the other sucker genera. But analyzing what makes each of these fish species unique can be really fascinating. As the title of the video indicates, we will first discuss all the members of the Moxostoma, or all the species of red horse and jump rock. Unlike many other fish families, there isn't much difference visually in colors and patterning of all these different species. So when it comes to identifying unique species of red horse, the most reliable indicators are understanding the range of where each is found, as well as lip size and shape, and just the general size of the fish. The black red horse is a medium 10 to 15 inch size sucker, with a long slender body and a nearly unmarked tail fin. Its body is silvery or olive with a pale belly, and adults have a pointed head with a thick lower lip. In the breeding season, males develop faint orange flanks and dark vertical stripes along the sides. Black red horse live in medium flow streams and rivers with gravel or rocky bottoms. They are native across much of the eastern U.S., from the Mobile River system in Alabama, north through the Great Lakes region into Michigan and Ontario. They also exist as far west as Oklahoma. This species is considered a species of least concern, although there are some northern populations that have declined and are now protected by Canadian agencies. The black tail red horse is easy to recognize by its colored tail fin, as a black stripe runs along the base of the lower lobe. It usually reaches 10 to 16 inches long. Blacktail red horse are native to the Gulf Coast drainage of Alabama, Mississippi, and Florida, and they are common in that range. They are very adaptable and can be found in streams, rivers, swamps, and delta areas in slow to moderate water over sand, silt, or gravel. In spring, they migrate into smaller streams to spawn over the gravel. This is currently listed as a species of least concern. The Carolina red horse is a recently recognized species found only in the Carolinas. It has a heavy body with a bronze brown back and a pale silvery belly. The lower lip is deeply notched. This fish prefers slow, deep pools in large rivers, and it spawns in the riffles of tributaries in the spring. The Carolina red horse was only recognized as a species in the 1990s, and it still lacks a formal Latin name. It's quite rare and North and South Carolina both list it as a threatened species. Both anglers and conservationists are still working to learn more about this species. The copper red horse has a very small range found only in Quebec, Canada. Adults are a striking coppery red or bronze on the back, fading to a pale belly with a long and blunt head. They are a larger red horse reaching about 24 inches in length. Unlike many other red horse species, Copper red horse feed mostly on freshwater mussels and snails. They have powerful crushing teeth adapted perfectly for that purpose. This very limited range and small population size makes the copper red horse one of the rarest fish in North America. It is federally listed as endangered in Canada and is considered critically imperiled. Recovery plans are in place to protect its spawning tributaries and restore river habitat. Unlike the copper red horse, the golden red horse is a widespread and common species. It has a golden or yellowish belly and an olive back, and it typically grows around 12 to 16 inches. This fish inhabits a wide variety of habitats from slow pools of large rivers to lakes and small streams. Golden red horse are native through much of eastern North America. They occur in the Great Lakes, the St. Lawrence Basin, and the Mississippi and Ohio River systems. This is an abundant species and is ranked as least concern. Gray red horse is a dull gray brown reaching around 12 to 15 inches. They live in moderate flow rivers and streams often covered in sand or gravel, found in many rivers of Texas. Relative to the other red horse species, they are more tolerant of warmer water. Currently, it is not considered threatened and remains relatively common in its limited range. 
The greyfin red horse is a recently recognized but undescribed species, known from only one river system in Alabama and Georgia. It looks a lot like the black tail red horse, but has plain gray fins instead. Its body is silvery or bronze with faint dark stripes along the back. It grows roughly 10 to 14 inches. Greyfin red horse prefer low gradient streams with moderate flow. This fish was only identified as a separate species recently, and its exact status is still being studied. Because it has such a small range, it could be vulnerable to dams or pollution. At present, it is not officially listed, but conservationists keep a close eye on it because it is so range restricted. The greater red horse is the largest red horse species, reaching over 30 inches. It has a deep body that is olive brown to bronze. It has a bright red tail fin that is most obvious in adults, and large black edged scales. This species lives in clean, fast flowing rivers and rocky shoals, but will also enter into large lakes. Its native range covers much of eastern North America. There are no known populations introduced outside of its native range. Greater Red Horse are long lived, sometimes over 20 years, and famous for being sluggish but hardy. It is a fish of least concern, but their numbers are declining in places due to habitat loss and heavy harvest from bow fishing. The Mexican Red Horse is usually under 20 inches, with a typical Red Horse body, silvery bronze above and lighter below. It is named for its native range in Mexico. It inhabits desert mountain streams where it lives over rocky runs and shallow pools. This species is rare and very little is known about it, mostly because it lives in a remote region. It is considered data deficient and it wasn't clear to me what its conservation status currently is. The notch lip red horse is usually around 12 inches in length with a brownish or olive body and a lower lip that has a distinctive notch or V shape. This fish prefers moderate currents over cobble or gravel. It's very similar in appearance to the other red horses, but the center of the lower lip is indented. The notch lip red horse is fairly common within its range and is not considered at risk. The pea lip red horse has a robust body and very thick lips. Adults reach around 12 to 16 inches. This species is native to the Ozark Plateau region, mainly the White River Basin in southern Missouri and northern Arkansas. Peelip Red Horse are moderately common in their range, though like all suckers they are sensitive to very poor water quality. The River Red Horse is a large heavy bodied sucker growing to be as big as 30 inches. It's known for its big wrinkled lips. It has a bronze back and a silvery belly and adults often have faint black spots or stripes on the sides. This species prefers large, clear rivers with gravel or boulder bottoms. Its native range is very broad, spanning much of the eastern U.S. In Canada, it has populations in southern Ontario and Quebec. Similar to the copper red horse, river red horse feed on mussels, snails, and insects on the bottom. Throughout most of its range, it's listed as least concern. However, its population has declined dramatically in some parts of its range, especially in Canada, to dams, pollution, and habitat fragmentation. The robust red horse is a very large and rare sucker, growing around 30 inches and 18 pounds. It has a deep, stout body with a high arched back. It has bronze sides with faint dark blotches and large lips. Males develop bumps or tubercles on their fins and head when spawning. It lives only in a few river systems on the Atlantic and Gulf slopes. The robust red horse was only described in the 1990s and it is listed as federally endangered. Conservationists have captured wild fish for captive breeding and reintroduction in hopes of boosting its numbers. The sicklefin red horse, also known as the Ugi Datli, is another recently recognized species. Notable for its long, sickle-shaped dorsal fin, it grows around 24 inches in length and has a golden bronze body. Its range is extremely limited. It is known only from the Little Tennessee River system in western North Carolina and very northern Georgia. This fish was well known to local people but was not distinguished by scientists until the 1990s, and it wasn't even formally named until 2025. Unfortunately, dam construction and habitat loss in the mid-20th century has caused their numbers to plummet. 
The sicklefin red horse is a threatened species, and multiple agencies are collaborating to try and preserve this fish. The shorthead red horse is one of the most common and widespread of all the red horse species. It has an olive back and a golden belly, with very large scales. It reaches about 16 to 20 inches in length. Shorthead red horse are adaptable generalists. They live in rivers of all sizes and even in lakes. They feed on a broad diet of invertebrates, organic matter, and algae. Their native range covers much of eastern and central North America. Interestingly, shortheads have expanded beyond their original range in several areas. Anglers encounter them frequently, and they are abundant and listed as a species of least concern. The silver red horse is another large species, growing to be around 28 inches. It has a silvery gray body and large scales. It is native to clean, clear rivers and the adjacent lakes of the Great Lakes and the Mississippi Basin. One famous silver red horse was aged at 41 years old, making it one of the oldest freshwater fish documented. This longevity is one of its remarkable traits. Silver red horse are ranked as a species of least concern. The smallmouth red horse looks similar to the shorthead, but as its name implies, it has a proportionately smaller mouth. Like most other red horse species, it normally reaches 12 to 16 inches. It has a brownish back and orange tinged fins. Smallmouth red horse are common and unthreatened. The V-lip red horse is a smaller sized red horse native to the Atlantic slope streams from Virginia through the Carolinas. It has the typical red horse body color, but is easily recognized by the lower lip that comes to a sharp V-shaped point. It is considered a species of least concern and has no special protection status, remaining fairly common where it occurs. Next up are the species of jump rock, which are smaller fish still in the same Moxostoma genus, but are characterized by a different common name. The big eye jump rock is one of the smaller fish on this list, around 7 to 9 inches long. It has notably large eyes which can help set it apart from the other jump rock species. It is found only in the upper Roanoke River drainage of Virginia and North Carolina. Its body is cylindrical and brownish without any striking color. It basically looks like a mini version of all the previous red horse. It is a species of least concern, indicating that it is stable in its small range. The black tip jump rock is another small river fish, reaching around 8 inches in size. Its range is on the Atlantic slope from Virginia down to central North Carolina. As the name suggests, the tip of its dorsal and caudal fins are dark, though this feature can be subtle. It lives in clear streams over rocky and sandy bottoms. Despite being common enough in its range to be listed as a fish of least concern, this species is unknown to most and usually isn't given much attention. Brassy jump rock is a recently characterized species found primarily in the streams of the Carolinas. It reaches around 10 inches in length. Physically it resembles the other jump rocks, but it can be distinguished by a slightly higher body and subtle differences in lip shape and scales. Because it was long unrecognized, not much about its status is known. However, it's believed to be fairly common in the streams found within its range. The greater jump rock is the largest of all the jump rocks, reaching around 17 inches. It has a thick body, bronze olive color, and a thick sucker mouth. Its native range is in Georgia and Alabama. The greater jump rock is considered fairly secure and is one of only a handful of jump rock species in the southeast. The Mascata jump rock is a fish found in western Mexico named for the Mascata River in Jalisco where it was first collected. Little detailed information is available on this species, but it likely has the same lifestyle as the other jump rocks, living in clear mountain streams and feeding on invertebrates. The Stripes jump rock is probably the most patterned fish on this list. It's marked by several dark stripes along its back and its sides. Its fins can be yellow, olive, or orange. This fish grows to be around 8 to 11 inches. 
The species lives in Atlantic draining rivers of Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. It is considered a species of least concern. The long-lipped jump rock is a fish of southern Mexico, of which very little is published or known. In fact, so little is published that I couldn't even find a picture of the species. Virtually nothing is known about its current status other than its existence. While the species of red horse and jump rock aren't the most colorful or beautifully patterned fish, I find their diversity and role in the ecosystem fascinating. If you enjoyed this video, please support me by subscribing to my channel and checking out my other videos. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next one.